thank you everybody for joining the next Velocity O Viewpoint. And with me, I have Liz Corey, who's our Chief Human Resources Officer. As many of you know, I'm Keith Godey. I lead the cloud practice for Velocio. A lot of our videos have talked around technology and cloud and things like things of that nature more on a technical from a technical standpoint, but I thought it'd be good to start folding in um, a business perspective to some of these topics. And and Liz Liz you know, graciously is giving some of her time with us to talk about things from an HR perspective today. And, and you know, I, it really hit recently that working remote is absolutely the new normal. And I was talking with a colleague of mine and he said his business has now classified associates in two ways. One, 100% remote or, or hybrid, meaning 50% or more remote. There was no permanent in the office any longer. And I, I think that's somewhat here to stay to a certain degree. And so a lot of things change in a, from a business standpoint, especially from an HR standpoint. And so Liz, I want to talk a little bit about um, corporate culture. And I know that that is very important to you. And with this context of a more remote workforce, what challenges do you see with building and or maintaining a positive corporate culture with that with a, a you know remote workforce? Yeah, so thanks, Keith. I'm super excited to be here chatting with you about this topic. Uh, first and foremost, I think there are the obvious things that are challenges with building a remote culture. You know, the first is communication. How do we effectively communicate with people um, who may be in different time zones, who may be all over the world uh, in a different way than we've communicated in the past? No longer are we going to be having water cooler talks or walking by someone's office to have those what we would call positive collisions in the office to share information and follow up on things. So I think communication is one of the obvious ones. The next one is about connection, right? Being able to connect with people in the more social aspect of work, celebrating birthdays, you know, recognizing performance and things like that. Definitely a big challenge. How do you do that remotely? How do you make sure that you're recognizing even the hard work that people are doing? I think some of the, the less obvious ones are around accountability, really just holding people accountable to getting the work done. Again, there's no, there's no drive-bys. We can't pop into someone's office and say, hey, what's the status of something? How can I help you with that? Or can we connect on something? Do you have any questions for me? So the outreach on accountability needs to be very, very intentional. I think last is around development activities and training. I know I've seen and, and talked to, to many other HR leaders, um, you know, in similar type industries and in different industries where training has just dropped. If I can't do training in a classroom, how am I supposed to develop people? And that becomes all part of your culture, right? The more training that we can provide to, to team members, the more positive the culture. So I think, you know, when you look at communication, accountability, connection, training and development, those things are all pretty major challenges when trying to build a positive culture working remotely. Right, right, I, for sure. And, and you know, so building off that, you know, assuming you have this positive corporate culture, then how, how does that trickle down into, into individual team member engagement and, and sure. building and get that engaged workforce, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think engagement is a word that has been used in the world of human resources for, for a very long time. And, you know, I think today we need to flip that on our uh, on its head a little bit. And when, when we're looking at engagement, we're really looking at what is the experience that somebody's having? Are they having a positive experience when it comes to onboarding? Are they having a positive experience with their team, team leaders, um, with their team meetings? Are they having a positive experience through one-on-ones? You know, what does that experience look like for people in terms of using employee benefits, leveraging employee benefits? So measuring that experience and thinking through every single thing that we're doing to make sure that it is creating that positive experience will lead to a more engaged workforce, will lead to a more productive workforce. People are having a good experience, they become happier and therefore more engaged and productive. Are you? Are there any specific tools, techniques that that you're using or thinking about implementing for a remote workforce to to drive that engagement to ensure that positive experience? Yeah, I mean it's it's all about 
leveraging the technology that you have. So it's leveraging our payroll system, making sure that the information provided is clear and crisp, making sure that if somebody's enrolling in benefits, that we've got a nice smooth workflow for that and tools to support that enrollment, making sure that things are there on time. You know, you just think about a new hire, the laptop is key and critical, making sure that that gets yeah. out in a very positive, uh, professional and rapid manner, right? Yeah. And again, all leading to that experience. And just, you know, we've been going through a lot of activities to look at even the technology that we have and how can we use it better, right? To create that. For sure. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I think, um, you know, it's kind of leading me to think through a lot of articles that we're seeing now around remote workforce and things. Um, they talk a lot about employee burnout, right? Yes. And, and yes. always, I mean, your, your, your laptop's typically within a, a room or two of, of most of your life now, right? And so right, right. it's very hard to disconnect at times. Yeah. And so do you think that's an important factor and something that uh, businesses need to be monitoring and looking at as, as more of their workforce is working from home and their computer is on all the time and it is a room away? Yep, yep, absolutely. Connecting with somebody on an individual basis through a one-on-one, -on -one, um, through just quick conversations and quick check-ins is key and critical. And even more critical is really meeting people where they're at, understanding what that level of burnout is and making sure that we can be completely flexible in how we handle that. Um, Microsoft just came out with its annual work trend survey and they did a lot of work with LinkedIn and employee burnout is the number one issue in the environment that we're finding ourselves in right now. And it's also becoming easier for people to find different careers, to do yeah. different things that they weren't able to do before. So managing that burnout, especially monitoring it, monitoring those stress levels really becomes on the, on the onus of the direct manager to yep. make sure that things aren't getting out of control and people are staying healthy. Yeah, and, and actually, you know, you made me think too, uh, what I'm hearing you say uh, in between the lines is, uh, the blocking and tackling of being a good manager and a good leader doesn't really change in a remote workforce. Good communication, you know, yep. consistent and, and productive and meaningful one-on-ones. Um, you know, understanding where your, your employees are in, in, on your team and where how they're feeling and monitoring burnout, you should be doing that whether it's remote or not, right? Now, how you do that, whether it's through video or sitting in an office together or, you know, maybe it's in the evening versus, you know, the nine to five, uh, maybe that changes a little bit. But being, being a consistent and good leader, uh, this doesn't have a big impact on that. D did you agree? I completely agree. As a matter of fact, I think it makes it even more important, right? Because right. a lot of the communications have to be intentional. Um, a lot of the outreach has to be intentional. You really have to think through, oh, I didn't get a chance, for example, to see Keith in the office today. Right. Let me reach out to him and see how he's doing. So I, I actually think it makes those core managerial skills and, and competencies even more important. Right. No, agree. Yeah. You know, you walk by somebody's office every day and at least say hi. Now right. you don't have that. So a simple, you know, quick chat or a quick video. Hey, how you doing? How's your morning going? Is it, it takes a little bit more deliberate action, I think. So exactly. agree. you know, how let's talk recruiting and hiring, yeah. right? Because I yeah. think what people are looking for when they join an organization is changing a little bit too, with again with the remote with the re remote nature. Like, how are you seeing recruiting practices changing, hiring practices changing? You talked a little bit about streamlining the process in terms of getting them a laptop, yeah. you know, making sure that that day one is a very good experience. But prior to day one, are you seeing the recruiting changes? Are you seeing what um, candidates are asking for, or the questions they're asking changing, things like that? Yeah, for sure. I think um, recruiting is the area that has been most surprising right now to me. Um, you know, candidates want to stay remote. They don't want to have to go back into a workforce, into an office. And yeah. so a lot of candidates are looking at that as their first criteria. Okay. I'm kind of enjoying working from home. I get a little bit more flexibility. I'm able to do this. 
And that's what I want to continue to do. I don't want to go in an office. So that that's number one. I think next, what we are seeing is less of a trend for people to apply for jobs. Um, it's very, very interesting. Our, our, our organic applications have gone down. So we're actually doing a lot more outreach, a lot more direct networking with people, um, looking a lot more at employee referrals. Um, so the old, um, you, you know, post and, and pray, so you get the right candidates, that's yep. gone. You know, we again, I, you know, I keep using the word intentional, but the sourcing has to be very intentional, offering the right compensation package, the right benefits, the right culture, um, you know, and, and a lot of uh, people are asking more questions about company stability, right? You know, a lot of um, companies have just not made it through COVID. Right. And, People have been furloughed, they've been downsized, they're still feeling the pain or pinch of that, and right. asking a lot of those questions about stability. And, you know, then obviously wanting to make a connection, despite the fact that everything's remote. So there's a lot more criteria for candidates. It's very competitive. Um, the job market is not a soft one right now. People are active. Um, but you've got to reach out and and candidates have to reach out as well so it's very interesting time for recruitment yeah no and, and and like you mentioned i mean i think a lot of a lot of folks that we're bringing into the organization are part of you know proactive recruiting right um right. Right. actually seeking them through networks and other things so you know we're seeing that as well yeah. um you know i think kind of to wrap here liz if you had to leave us with with three three things as a good leader good manager within an organization, taking everything we talked about into consideration, you know, do you mind restating kind of what those would be from your standpoint? Yeah, I would, I would definitely say first and foremost, you know, make sure you're setting your goals and objectives and that that line to accountability is clear with all of your team members. And that simply happens by conversation. And so, you know, my next point would be make sure that that communication, those lines of communication are open, that different vehicles are available for communication, um, that you're checking in and touching base with everybody, even if you think they're okay, right? Let me just make sure that I'm touching base with people. And I think, I think third would be, you know, use the tools that you have available and have fun. Um, you know, we've done we've done a lot around you know the whole concept of engagement with happy hours and um, you know town halls and kickoff meetings and you know just those ability to connect with people again is is key and critical. But I can't emphasize enough, Keith, accountability, coaching conversations, checking in communicate above and beyond. And I think you'll find yourself very successful as a leader in today's environment. Yep, couldn't agree more. And sometimes it's just back to the basics, right, Liz? I mean, yep. you know, there's not a silver bullet here. It's just staying connected to your people and and uh, make sure you're getting them what they need and and help, you know, helping throughout. So Liz, as always, thank you for the time. Thank Certainly you. appreciate the conversation. Um, something this remote this remote environment that we're all going to be operating in something we're tracking very closely and would love to keep talking with you more on it as things evolve and develop so again as always thanks again liz thank you enjoyed it thanks keith bye bye